At the start of the 1930s, the Kingdom of Yugoslavia brought its first tanks from France. These were the older Renault FT and the slightly improved Renault Gigress tanks. While their combat value was limited at best, they served as a base for further development of the armored forces in Yugoslavia. By the time the Axis began their major offensive operation in the Balkans during April 1941, the aging Reno FT and Reno Kigres tanks represented nearly half of the armored strength of the Yugoslavian army. Hello and welcome to another Tank Encyclopedia voiced article. I'm your host, Tony, and today I will be covering the Yugoslavian Reno FT and M28 tanks. If you like our videos and want to support us, please consider donating on Patreon or Paypal. All of the funds will be used to improve future tank encyclopedia content. Any help would be greatly appreciated. Before we continue, we'd like to introduce the latest book from one of our team members, Red Army Auxiliary Armored Vehicles by Alex Tarasov. In the 1930s, Soviet theoreticians gave birth to the most innovative combat doctrine at the time, the Deep Battle. The leading role in the new way of fighting was given to the mechanized troops which, in turn, required a multitude of combat and supporting auxiliary vehicles. The book shows that Soviet theoreticians and designers were in many ways ahead of their time. However, the Red Army entered the Second World War in a disorganized state and without a proper armored doctrine. By using real wartime reports, the book vividly shows how the lack of proper organization and material affected Soviet armored warfare throughout the Great Patriotic War, from Southwestern Front in 1941 to 1942 to the Battle of Berlin and the Manchurian Operation in 1945. If you'd like to buy it, there's a link in the description. Following the collapse of the Central Powers during the First World War, much of the southern territories of the Austro-Hungarian Empire were absorbed by the newly created Kingdom of Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes, Kingdom of SHS, during 1918. The newly created army of this kingdom received a number of weapons from the Allied forces present in the Balkans. This shipment of weapons did not include Renault FT tanks, which were present in smaller numbers within the Allied Balkan forces. In September of 1919, the Kingdom of SHS Army officially requested that some of these be allocated to them. This request was not granted, as the Allies informed the SHS Army representatives that these were to be stationed in Bulgaria and Romania. This did not stop the SHS Army officials, which sent an additional delegation to France directly to ask for permission to receive these tanks. Eventually, these attempts proved to be futile, as the French Ministry of War stated that this was not possible. The Kingdom of SHS was instead reassured that once sufficient numbers of Reno FTs were available, these would be allocated to them. In early December of 1919, Louis Franchet d'Espere, the commander of Allied forces in the Balkans, officially allowed that an SHS group of 10 drivers and as many mechanics as possible be moved to the Bulgarian capital Sofia to begin training and familiarization with the Renault FT tanks which were stationed there. In February 1920, the French officially started to transfer these tanks to the SHS army. The contingents of 8 Renault FTs consisted of 3 armed with machine guns, four armed with 37mm guns and one radio Telegraphie Sans Fil version. It is important to note that the SHS and later Yugoslav army did not use the term tank, but instead Borna Kola. This term could be translated as armored or even combat vehicle depending the source used. To avoid confusion, this article will use the term tank. There is some disagreement in the sources on the precise date or even number of tanks of this type operated by the Yugoslav army. The previously mentioned information was according to author Ann Jokic. Other authors like Captain Magdi Denda and D. Dmitrievich 
give a completely different account of how the first tanks were acquired. At the end of 1920s, the Kingdom of Yugoslavia, the name was changed in 1929, took a loan of some 300 million French francs for purchasing their first tanks. By doing this, the Yugoslav army was able to acquire 21 Renault tanks. The first group of 10 tanks arrived in April, and the remaining on 11th July 1929. This included 10 Renault FTs and 11 improved Renault Kegresh tanks, in many Serbian sources marked as M28. Author B.B. Dimitrievich mentions that there is a possibility that the M28 used by the Yugoslavian army had a stronger engine, but with no more information about it. The precise number of Renault Kegres tanks acquired is not completely clear in the sources, ranging from 10 to 11 vehicles. The reason why this version was bought and not the old FT is not mentioned in the sources. While they were almost identical to the older Renault FT model, the M28 had a different suspension, which necessitated the acquisition of additional spare parts. The M28s were used to form the first tank company in the Yugoslavian army, stationed in Kragujevac during April 1930. It would be allocated to Sarajevo, where a tank training school was formed. The remaining Reno FT would be used to equip another tank company, which was stationed in the capital Belgrade. The precise strength of these two companies is unclear. The first actual documents that mention these unit's peacetime compositions are dated from 1935. According to them, each company contained 12 tanks. Each company was further divided into four platoons, each with three tanks. However, author De Predojevic indicates that the first 21 tanks were all actually Reno FTs. He also notes that in 1935, an additional 20 tanks were bought. To complicate matters even further, both he and D. Babaj states that the Yugoslavian army had 20 M28 tanks. After the First World War, the Yugoslavian army was in desperate need of all kinds of weapons, ranging from ordinary rifles to artillery. In 1932, Poland and the Yugoslavian army signed an agreement for purchasing some 14 Reno FT tanks, while the Yugoslavian army later showed great interest in the 7TP tank. Due to the German invasion of Poland in September 1939, nothing came from this. Following the arrival of the first tanks, Yugoslav army circles began theorizing how to best employ them about the further acquisition of more tanks and general organization. One of the Yugoslavian generals that advocated for forming tank battalions supported by motorized infantry placed under a unified command was Milan de Nejic. He made the first steps in proposing this plan during 1932. Two years later, the general staff of the Yugoslavian army, together with the King Alexander Karadordjevic examined it. The plan for creating mechanized and armored units met with the approval of army officials, but more importantly, also the king himself. For the realization of this plan, General Njajic was appointed as the chief of the general staff in June 1934. His success was short-lived as, only a few months later, the king was assassinated in Marseille while visiting France. General Nedish was removed from his new position shortly after that. He was replaced by General Yubomir M. Maric, who continued working on extending the armored formations. The process of reorganization and modernization of Yugoslavian forces was accelerated after the start of the Second Italian Ethiopian War in 1935. France agreed to supply Yugoslavia with an additional contingent of 20 Reno FT tanks during 1935 and 1936 as military aid. The whole operation was held in secrecy by both sides. While the last tank arrived in 1936, it would take almost a whole year before they were actually allocated for troop use. By September 1936, 
There were some 45 Reno FTs and 10 or 11 M28s available. That same month, from this vehicle, a battalion of armored vehicles was formed under the command of Lt. Col. P. J. Bekovic. This unit is often mistakenly called the 1st Battalion, a unit which was actually formed later. The battalion, when it was formed, had only a single company, which was stationed in Belgrade. This company was used primarily for crew training, but was also used on a military parade held in honor of the King's birthday in September of 1936. During the same year, a new regulation regarding the battalion's strength was adopted. According to it, the battalion consisted of one command unit, three companies, and a reserve company. The command unit had three tanks, the same as the reserve company. The three companies each had 10 tanks, for a total of 36 tanks. In addition, there was also an independent support company with four tanks. In 1938, the battalion organization was once again changed. This time, each company was further reinforced with an additional platoon of M28 tanks. The battalion's strength was increased to 48 tanks in total. Two years later, Yugoslavian army brought 54 R35 tanks from France. Thanks to this, it was possible to form an additional battalion. The original battalion of armored vehicles was renamed to the 1st Battalion of Armored Vehicles. The 2nd Battalion of Armored Vehicles was equipped with newly acquired R35 tanks. Most of the 1st Battalion personnel was relocated to the 2nd Battalion, which necessitated retraining of the crew members. At the end of 1940, the number of tanks in each battalion was noted to be 50 tanks. Regarding the armament of the FT and M28 tanks, one-third were armed with machine guns, while the remaining were armed with 37mm guns. In addition, during this time, elements of the 1st Battalion were rearranged across three major cities. The Yugoslavian army initiated a number of infantry and tank exercises in order to test the idea of cooperation between these two army branches. One such exercise was held in hilly terrains in Sumatia, in Serbia. There, the Reno FT proved to be unsuited for supporting infantry due to its unsuitability for bad terrain. Its performance was so poor that the infantry commander suggested to the high command to urgently find more modern equipment. In September of 1939, huge exercises that should have included three tank companies were to be carried out. However, after only a few weeks, this was cancelled and never carried out on a larger scale. There were other problems with the crew training and the mechanical reliability of tanks. For example, the Zagreb Station Company lacked any proper firing range. For this reason, firing practice was rarely carried out. Mechanical problems with the Reno tanks were also a huge issue. The Reno FT was outdated and generally worn out, while the M28 had problems with its rubber tracks. The Reno FT and M28 retained their original French dark green color, even those that were brought from Poland. Some of the vehicles received different types of camouflages, but which precise color is not listed in the sources. The FTs were usually marked with French numbers between 66000 and 74000, but also with additional four-digit numbers or two Roman numerals. These were painted either on the front of the vehicle or on the suspension. The M28 were only marked with two-digit numbers ranging from 81 to 88, but according to some older photographs, one vehicle has number 79 painted on it. It is unclear why this is so. In the years before the war, reorganization and rearmament process of the Yugoslavian army was delayed. After the military plan dated 1938, the Yugoslavian army was to be reinforced with 252 medium and 36 heavy tanks. Eventually, only 8 T-32 SID vehicles were brought from Czechoslovakia in 1936 with 54 R-35 tanks from France in 1940. One of the many reasons why the armored development was slowed down was due to short-sighted military generals 
like Dushan Tastimovich, who believed that the tanks were ineffective weapons. By the time the Axis attacked in April 1941, Yugoslavia could only muster less than 120 armored vehicles. In March 1941, the government of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia was negotiating with the Germans to join the Axis powers. A group of pro-Western Yugoslav Air Force officers under the leadership of General Dusan Simovic staged a coup on the 27th of March 1941 in order to prevent this from happening. Hitler was furious after this event and ordered that Yugoslavia be occupied. For the upcoming invasion, the Axis forces included 30 German, 23 Italian, and 5 Hungarian divisions. The Germans alone had some 843 tanks, including 400 modern Panzer III's and IVs. The attack was made on the 6th of April 1941, which started the so-called April War. Opposing them, the Yugoslavian army could muster some 31 divisions. However, during the attack, only 11 partially formed divisions were available. The lack of mobilizations and the overextension of available forces essentially sealed the fate of the Yugoslavian army. When the Axis forces attacked, elements of the 1st Battalion were distributed to three operational bases in Belgrade, Zagreb, Skopje, and Sarajevo. As Belgrade was under heavy enemy bombing raids, the command unit and the reserve company of this battalion moved towards its place of gathering at Velika Plana, but without its equipment. They awaited the remaining elements of the units and its own tanks to arrive. By 9th April, due to huge confusion, other units were unable to link up with them, so the personnel of the first company tried to march to Bosnia, but were captured shortly by the advancing Germans. The first company was stationed in Skopje, Macedonia. It received orders on the night of the 6th to move towards the village of Pirova. On the way to that destination, one of the tanks broke down and had to be abandoned. The company formed a defense line around Yevjelje. A German forward reconnaissance unit spotted the Yugoslav defense line. While these two were spotted by the first company, the unit commander refused to open fire. Shortly after that, the first company positions were bombed by German bombers, losing a number of tanks either damaged or completely destroyed. The German ground forces then attacked the first company shattered positions. While some Reno FTs tried to fire back, they proved ineffective and nearly all would be lost. Only four tanks managed to escape, and on 8th April, together with other Yugoslavian soldiers that survived the German attack in Macedonia, tried to escape to Greece, where the first company effectively stopped to exist. The history of the second company, which was stationed in Zagreb, is not completely clear. While it did not see any action, the precise location of its vehicles during the war is unknown. The main theory is that they never even tried to move from their base, the problem is that German documents after the April War do not mention any tanks being captured in Croatia. The third company was evacuated from Sarajevo and transported to the Serbian village of Orasac, near Arandelovac. On 9th April, three days later, it was ordered to move towards Lazarevac to provide cover for the retreating Yugoslavian forces. They failed to do so and ran out of fuel. The advancing Germans, in the meantime, captured the company's fuel supply vehicles. The unit commander ordered that all vehicles 37mm guns be sabotaged and made useless to the Germans, and that the machine guns be taken with them. They tried to reach Sarajevo, but the commander decided that it was too dangerous to continue and effectively disbanded the unit. After the brief April War, the Germans managed to capture some 78 out of 120 Yugoslavian armored vehicles. These were to be transported back to Germany. Following the uprising against the occupation after June 1941, the Germans were forced to allocate some of these vehicles to fight the Yugoslav partisans. From the available stocks of captured Reno FTs, the Germans formed six platoons with five vehicles each. 
These were initially engaged against the partisan forces supporting the German infantry formations. Due to their general obsolescence, the Reno FTs were mainly replaced with more modern French tanks like the R-35 or Samoa S-35. Nearly all of the Reno FTs were used instead to equip over 30 auxiliary and improvised armored trains that were used to protect the vital supply lines of the Axis power in Balkan. Each of these trains was reinforced with at least two Reno FT tanks. They would be used in this role up to the war's end. It is also unclear but quite possible that the Germans introduced additional Reno FT tanks captured in France or elsewhere. The fate of the M28 tanks is not completely clear. The Germans managed to capture some of them, but how they used them is unknown. After the collapse of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia, the Germans created the independent state of Croatia. While it was their puppet state and ally, the Germans were quite unwilling to give the Croats any armored vehicles captured from the Yugoslavian army. Nevertheless, the Croatian military forces managed to operate an unknown number, but likely only a few, of Reno FT tanks. The use of this tank was possibly quite limited in any other role than perhaps crew training. During the war, the Yugoslav partisans managed to capture a great number of Axis-operated armored vehicles. Due to a lack of documentation, it is often difficult to identify which precise vehicle they captured and used. By the end of a war, a number of German armored trains with Reno FTs were captured. Their use after the war would be limited at best, if used at all. Today, one surviving Reno FT tank can be seen at the Belgrade Military Museum. The Reno FT and M28 were the first tanks operated by the Yugoslavian army. By the time these were acquired in 1930, they were already obsolete. Poor training, a lack of crew and personnel, and mechanical problems due to their age led to poor combat performance when they were employed against the more modern German army. While they played an insignificant role during the 1941 war with Germany, their importance might be regarded as more as the first steps in the development of the Yugoslavian armored force in the following years. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscription. You can find more information relating to these vehicles in full article which is linked in the description. If you like what we are doing and want to let us continue working on these videos, please consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be allocated to improving our articles and videos for you. Until next time, keep us in your sights.